Welcome to the Western Officiating Development Partnership. In this segment, we're going to talk about communication and how important and vital it is in our role as officials. Well, I think the, the communication is key for us because I think what it does is it, it provides us an avenue to a um, humanize our job. So we get a chance to communicate with the players or the coaches and they realize that we're people. We're not just out there doing a job. And then I think it, it gives us an opportunity to create respect. And, and the big thing we need to create within the game from the players and, and the coaches is we need them to respect us individually, right? And respect the job I, that we do. And, and that can lead us then down to a path where there's some trust. And once I think we can get the coaches and the players to trust us, um, it's just going to open up all those avenues to make it easier for everybody. They need to know the people they're dealing with in order to best communicate with them and know what works for that approach. So things with coaches, I think what everybody expects and demands, our game demands it, is honesty and integrity. And as long as you uphold those things, they're going to certainly hold you accountable, but they'll allow you a little bit of latitude when mistakes are made. But the other flip side of that is, is the listening aspect that we don't often talk about enough. Letting the player or your partners or the coaching staff know that you've heard their, their issue, you understand their complaint, um, but you're going to act in a certain manner, you're going, your decision will stand. That's, that's such a critical part that people need to know that you've heard them and that you understand, and you're, but you're gonna move on. And if you can do that and deliver uh, your communication in that manner, the game will become very easy for you. Oh, honesty is a huge part of it. Uh, essentially when we're on the ice it's just one giant relationship and honesty is a huge part of it. Uh, you got to earn the respect from the coaches, rightfully so, um, and being dishonest is one way to quickly, quickly ruin that relationship. So now we've seen how important communication is and how it affects our respect and rapport within the game. Now we're going to show you the differences between how referees communicate with players and coaches, how linesmen can communicate with players and coaches and how us as officials communicate with our teammates. Specifically speaking from a linesman's perspective, uh, our job is more of a, um, uh, we actually have to calm things down a little bit more. The aggression is uh, usually between the coach, uh, the players and the referee. Um, and as officials, as linesmen, we're you know, more in charge of the flow of the game. Um, and I think it really helps and it benefit, benefits everybody involved uh, as a linesman, if you have a good demeanor, you're calm, um, you can kind of put some fires out. Uh, you have to, instead of elevating the, instead of elevating the aspect of the heat of the moment, um, you try to really uh, work towards making sure that everything's uh, um, calmed, uh, everything is seen in uh, a different light, and you can kind of alleviate a little bit of uh, frustration from time to time. I think that you know, it was a real tribute uh, or a real attribute uh, of, the, of the linesman. Linesman can be a great buffer between the referees and the coaches and the benches and uh, we can get in the players ears and talk to them and kind of de-escalation is the key. Um, everyone's always hot and worked up a lot of the time when we need to intervene and um, if you have good de-escalation techniques you can bring the temperature of the game down and uh, be able to work through situations with the game participants better. We as linesmen have a pretty unique opportunity and, 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 and role where we can kind of play the, the good cop to the bad cop. Um, you know, if you, if you reference the, the referee as being the bad cop, but we can kind of have a different relationship where the players where we can not, not um, you know, totally disregard with what, what the referees are doing, but kind of play the other side of, of bringing the players down and, and diffusing the situation, maybe taking some heat off the referees as well. Same, same thing with coaches. Uh, we, we have that opportunity to be sort of a sounding board for the, for the coaches to say what they have to say and without having to get the referees involved and, and they can vent. And obviously there's, there's lines that get crossed and we, we, have, to, we have to accept that things, things that are said aren't, uh, aren't always appropriate and we have to deal with it uh, appropriately. What's that? I straight off his shoulder. Yeah. Just, con just concerned if he bumped, uh, bumped the goalie going behind, but he, he was clear, so. They were looking to see if it was gloved, though. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's communication is, is key, especially, you know, you're going to have to deal with coaches and, and most of the time you're dealing with the coaches is in a situation where, you know, the temperature has risen and, and there's a little bit of uh, heat involved in a conversation and it's, it's very key that as an official we go over there and, and we, we're the one that's, you know, trying to keep everything, keep everything, you know, Bring, it, bring a situation from here and bring it back down to here. So you have to, you have to go there with that mindset that you say, listen, I gotta, I gotta make sure I'm the one that's not only running the, the conversation, but I'm, almost making, I'm making sure that I'm bringing the conflict from here to here, bringing it down rather than escalating it. So obviously a lot has to do with your demeanor. Uh, you know, you have, to be, you have to take charge when you're talking with the coach. Obviously you wanna take control of the situation, but also you wanna treat them with respect and make sure that you're trying to bring them down and obviously or honestly a lot of the time they just need to be heard and uh, as long as you can keep it quick and we're not do, making a habit of always doing it. Communication's definitely huge. Um, you know I, I, I think for, for me it's, it's to have the confidence uh, to go over to a coach or a player right, wrong or indifferent um, to um, deal with a situation that, that may arise. Um, and just have the confidence in going and, and, and approaching that situation and not just kind of leaving it to the side. Um, I, I mean, communication goes a long way. Um, being respectful uh, to the game and to the participants in the game, um, it, goes, it goes a long way. Yeah, something that someone told me last year, it's pretty easy. You just go to the head coach, you say, hey guys, who's, uh, who's responsible for the changes tonight? Like, where should I be looking? Say that to both coaches. Uh, and usually they respond pretty quickly and then the, the communication line's open for the rest of the game. Um, to understand their point of view and see where they're coming from. And the great thing about having those conversations is, you know, maybe the next day when you're going through your mind that game and how it played out, hopefully we've learned something. Maybe the coach has a really good point that we can use to improve our officiating and understanding as we move forward. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, on the PP, you hear me barking at him? Yeah, yeah okay. okay. so we just watch it, right? He's not, he's not, he's not doing anything silly, he's just he's standing there. Right? Me though, like, I want to okay, so he's putting the onus on himself then. Hang on, hang on here. Let me watch and see what's going on here, then I'll listen to you. Where? It's inside. Uh, his head went back, I don't think he hit him in the head, Kate. It wasn't in the back of your head. It was back of hey, head hey, head. relax. Okay, we're good. I got a cross check. Chris, you got your guys? Good. Cross check. Don, are you doing the forwards for the most part? Are you doing the forwards? Okay. Puck's there. Here, guys, here. Own guy, own guy. I think just having those discussions and building a relationship with your partner, a trusting relationship, and making sure that both of you are on the same page or all of the officials are on the same page. So knowing different situations, how we're going to interact, how we're going to communicate, and how decisions are going to be made on the ice. We don't have a lot of time to do that during the play or on the ice, so before the game, pre-game, it's vital that those conversations happen. Communication on the ice um, obviously is a huge part. Um, for me, it's definitely, uh, when I was younger, it was a little harder. Um, I didn't kind of, I wasn't the most outspoken guy on the ice, but I found that now you're with like uh, a core group of guys, it's still a lot of guys, but um, you just come in, you're there to do the job. And I think that personally, I can, uh, as soon as I meet another ref, it's just like, all right, we're buddies now. Like. I can have an open conversation on the ice and communicate effectively on the ice for the most part. Obviously, sometimes we trip up, but uh, I think the biggest thing for me is just um, just being aware, um, like whether it's the liney just buzzing by him and saying, "Hey, like how much time we got left on the clock?" or if you're talking to the other ref, just quick conversation, yes, no answers, all that stuff. So I think that's the biggest thing is just having an open line of communication and kind of letting the guys know like about plays in the room, talk about that, and just how the game's going. So. It's the same for me. Drive Mike. for those back wingers. Back wingers? They're coming in a bit. Are they? You gotta really set them there. Set them? Set them. Okay. The back wingers. The back guys. Set them? Set them in. Okay. Because they're coming in. They're coming in. Okay. Even up, eh? Four and four. Spurge! Four and four? Yeah. 
Four and four, guys. You guys good? Yeah, one. Just picked up on that high stick. That happens really quick. I couldn't even tell if it got him. Good pick up. Drops like, drops like a sack of hammer. Yeah. Well, oh, he took it pretty hard across the advisor there. We've seen some great examples of some great communication. Communication is key for us. What it does is it provides personality. It provides the opportunity that we go over to a bench that we have a relationship with, and we have to work through hard times. The foundation we've built through our communication will allow us and the participants to get through those situations. Our personality and our communication are key elements in officiating.